Elite athletes and coaches across the board and all sports agree on one main thing. What's that one thing? Thoughts are important. Your feedback and your thoughts, how you perceive yourself, the thoughts that you have before the point, the thoughts that you have between points, this is really important and this can help or hinder your performance. There's controllable and there's uncontrollable factors and to really be able to focus on what you can control and to be able to hone in on those details is really important, especially in table tennis. See, in other sports, maybe let's say for example like baseball, you're up at bat and you strike out, and guess what? You go take a comfy seat in the dugout, but in table tennis, you strike out, you know, seven, eight, nine times, guess who's up at bat again? You are, you're up at bat again. So the way that you perceive yourself, the thoughts that you have are important. And today I wanna to read you about two pages from the book, The Talent Code. Um, this is not pertaining to table tennis directly, but the principle is really important. Why do I wanna read it to you? So that you understand that it's not just my original ideas, but coaches and athletes worldwide agree on these principles. So I'm gonna read you just a little bit and then I'm gonna apply it to your table tennis game so that you understand how to make progress this year. Left to our own devices, we go along a pretty stable mindset, she said, but when we get a clear cue, a message that sends a spark, then boing, we respond. The boing phenomena can be seen most vividly in a series of experiments Dweck did with 400 New York fifth graders. The study was a scientific version of the fable, The Princess and the Pea, and its goal was to see how much a single signal, a single sentence of praise, can affect performance and effort, and what kind of signal is most effective. First, Dweck gave every child a test that consisted of fairly easy puzzles. Afterward, the researcher informed all the children of their scores, adding a single six-word sentence of praise. Half of the kids were praised for their intelligence. You must be smart at this. And half of them were praised for their efforts. You must have worked really hard. The kids were tested a second time, and, but this time they were offered a choice between a harder test and an easier test. 90% of the kids who had been praised for their efforts chose the harder test. The majority of kids who had been praised for their intelligence, on the other hand, chose the easy test. Why? When we praise children for their intelligence, Dweck wrote, we tell them that <laughs> we tell them that's the name of the game. Look smart, don't risk making mistakes. The third level of test was uniformly harder, and none of the kids did well. However, the two groups of kids, the praised for effort group and the praised for intelligence group, responded very differently to the situation. The effort group dug in and grew very involved with the test, trying solutions and testing strategies, Dweck said. They later said that they liked it, but the group praised for their intelligence hated the harder test. They took it as proof that they weren't smart. The experiment came full circle, returning to a test of the same difficulty as their initial test. The praised for effort group improved their initial score by 30%, while the praised for intelligence group score declined by 20%, all because of six short words. Dweck was surprised at the result, that she, so surprised at the result that she ran the study, we ran the study five times. Each time, the result was the same. So what about you? This week, when you're playing matches, are you going to focus on controllable factors or uncontrollable factors? This week, when you win a match, are you gonna walk off and say, ah, oh, I don't know, I was just lucky. That's like an uncontrollable factor, right? Or are you gonna finish the match and actually walk off the court and say, hey, that was a repeatable performance, and I'm gonna take notes, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this are the reasons why I did well. Are you gonna lose a match and just say, oh, I hate playing that guy, he's just so weird, right? That's, that's, that's like an uncontrollable factor. You were paired with that guy, that's an uncontrollable factor. Or are you going to say, hey, next time I'm going to change this and this and this and this and this. So how does this study pertain to your game? Well, the study talks about the kids that were praised for their intelligence or natural ability and kids that were praised for their efforts. So you need to be able to direct your thoughts toward your efforts. Don't fall down and just say like, I give up because I'm not as talented as this guy or this girl. No, effort, effort is important. When you're out there playing a match, are you gonna focus on controllable factors? Like, I'm gonna do everything I can 
to try to get the timing right and read this spin? Or are you going to focus on uncontrollable factors like, oh shoot, I hope he doesn't serve tomahawk serve again. Focus on the right things. Focus on putting out as much mental and physical effort as you can, and then you have no shame. But this takes work. This takes discipline. It's much easier to just say like, oh, this other guy is so lucky, there's no way I can beat him. Or his serve or his shot is so weird that I can't get it. It's easy to say. But it takes actual maturity and actual discipline for you on a daily basis, during practice, during matches, to be able to actually focus on the details that you need to focus on. I'm Samson Nabina. If you're watching this, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button right down below. And make sure you turn on the bell for more notifications. If you'd like to come visit us here in Akron, Ohio, we'd love to have you. We have daily training available. We'd love for you to join the training right here in Ohio.